This impressive looking instrument is a lightning machine. Well, actually, it's called a Wimshurst generator, named after the British inventor James Wimshurst, who devised it in the early 1880s for generating high voltage electricity. A machine of this size was capable of generating anything up to 50 or 60,000 volts. Unfortunately, it's not in working order. But with a larger, reconditioned machine, I can show you how it works. When I turn this handle here, two large glass plates connected to it by a system of pulley wheels and leather belts rotate in opposite directions. The glass plates have tinfoil sectors on them, spaced at regular intervals, giving them the appearance of spoked wheels. It only requires a small amount of charge on any one of those sectors to initiate the process by which, as they pass a neighbouring sector on the adjacent plate, they induce an equal and opposite charge. And this, in combination with the action of two sets of wire brushes set at right angles to each other and bearing on the plates, has the effect of separating positive from negative charge and multiplying it. The charge is picked up by these metal combs and then conducted to these capacitors on the front of the machine, which are known as Leiden jars. And once the electrical charge has built up to a sufficient level in these capacitors, then there is a lightning-like spark as the charge discharges between these metal armatures here. Such induction or influence machines, as they were sometimes known, were much more reliable than previous electrical machines, which worked on the principle of friction between contrasting materials like glass and silk. And so the Wimshurst generator became very popular in the late 19th and early 20th century for carrying out electrical experiments. And because of the high voltages that they were capable of, they were also used for early X-ray experiments. This particular object was used for that very purpose by its owner, E.G. Spencer Churchill, who, as an undergraduate here at Magdalen College in Oxford, bought it in 1898 for the purpose of experimenting with X-rays. He took a number of photographs with it, presumably of the limbs of his friends, uh, for purposes of entertainment. At the outset of the Boer War, Spencer Churchill was commissioned as a lieutenant in the Grenadier Guards, and he took this object with him to South Africa, where it was used by the Royal Army Medical Corps, along with this Jackson-type X-ray tube and this fluorescent screen here, to detect shrapnel and bullets and splinters in the wounds of soldiers. Thus, they pioneered a new technique in battle surgery.